I'm Amber, and my partner is Ben. I'm Steph, and my partner is Lindsay. I'm Jess, and my partner is Mackenzie. And we're going to tell the story of the trouble with lemons um, through a puppet show. Tyler McAllister needs a break. In the last few years, he has been in and out of more allergy doctor offices than he can count. Not to mention the fact that he's been plagued by nightmares ever since his father died. And if that weren't enough, his mother and brother are both fabulously successful movie stars who are often off, off on location for long periods of time. The last thing Tyler needs is to swim into a dead body on a midnight visit to the forbidden local quarry. But that is exactly what happens to him uh, while there with his lumpish but faithful friend, Limey. To make matters worse, Limey blames Tyler for, take, for talking him into sneaking out to the quarry that night in the first place. Come on, quit moping around. Let's go slip swimming. This is fun! While swimming, Tyler bumps into something. Watch it, Lemmy, you weirdo. What's your problem now, Spaz? Just then, a slimy, bloated object close to the surface. Lemmy, Lemmy, oh my god, Lemmy! Calm down! D did you see that? I saw it. it. I almost drowned. It was grabbing me. Later that night, as Tyler sits huddled in a blanket in his room trying to get warm, he and Lemmy try to decide what they should do. Tyler wants to call the rescue squad. Limey tells him that they should call the office, the sheriff, since you can't rescue someone who's already dead. Tyler, being new in town and less like, likely to have his voice recognized, makes the call. Limey hangs up the phone after Tyler has given the basic information, fearing that Tyler will slip and give names, thereby causing Limey to be grounded for life. Tyler then remembers the car they'd seen from across the water and how it had peeled out just as the two of them, two of them had arrived at the quarry. This leads him to the chilling thought that the dead dead man might have been murdered. Limey informs him that murders just don't occur in places like Wakefield. After speculating who the guy might have been for a while, they decide to go to bed, figuring the police will have the whole thing figured out by the time they wake up. That night, Tyler dreams about the dead man. Mixed in with the dream are tr images of the trouble he's had in the past and the disappointment he's been to his, he'd been to his recently deceased father. After lunch the next day, Tyler and Limey head to Buster's game room to pick up what news they can. They learn what pra practically the whole town is, that the whole town is out at the quarry where the state troopers are searching the water. As much as Tyler dreads it, he knows that if he ever expects to stop having bad dreams, he has to go out there too and find out about the body he had found there. A large crowd is milling about the quarry as Tyler and Limey arrive with Buster in his old Cadillac. Following Buster, he plows through the crowd and bo the boys reach the edge of the quarry where they see a trooper in a rowboat and two divers in the water. He also sees some men trying to comfort a large woman who believes it's her son in the water. Tyler is reminded of how he felt when he lost his father and knows there's nothing anybody can do to make the woman feel any better. He feels terrible when the body is found and turns out to be the woman's son, Boo Boo Anderson, a custodian at the school. Back at school on Monday, Tyler talks to Mary Grace Madigan, who helps organize his books and offers to help him learn the ropes around his new school. For Tyler, schools have always been a mystery, new or otherwise, and he doesn't see that changing anytime soon. After school, they walk home together, and knowing she'd understand, Tyler wishes he could tell her he was one of the kids who found Boo Boo Anderson. On Tuesday, despite Limey's warnings, Tyler angers the class bully, Beaver Bruckman. Beaver waits for Tyler after school and beats him up so badly he wets his pants. Chucky, the Tyler family's groundskeeper, arrives and drives him home. Embarrassed by his wet pants, Tyler refuses to get out of the car in front of the two neighbor ladies. Chucky pulls him out of the car and holds him over the sprinklers as Tyler tries to punch his way through, through, free. Soon, Tyler catches on, realizing that his pants are no longer any wetter than the rest of him. This marks the beginning of a close friendship between the two. Chucky takes Tyler to an appointment with the allergy doctor. On the way home, Chucky informs Tyler that the police have found chlorine in Boo Boo Anderson's lungs, which means he didn't die in the quarry but he was put there after he died. <coughs> Tyler's troubles continue to escalate. The next day, due to the allergy medication, Tyler falls asleep in science class and gets sent to the office to see the principal, Mr. Blumberg. After school, Tyler is alone in the office and overhears Mark and Jack. What do you think? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Just relax. We throw boo-boo into the quarry and you want me to forget it? The cops ask too many questions. Let them ask. We answer them. I'm glad you're happy. I haven't slept since this whole mess started. Just then, Mark and Jack see Tyler in Mr. Blumberg's office overhearing the whole conversation. When Mark and Jack pull up next to him on his way home and Jack opens the door and tells him to get in, Tyler sprints through a backyard in his panic to escape them and upon arriving home, 
practically barricades himself in his house. To make matters worse, Chucky is away picking up something for Tyler's mother. That night, Tyler goes to Mary Grace Madigan's house, feeling he has to tell someone what he knows about Mark and Jack, someone besides Limey, who still thinks everything will be all right if he just keeps his mouth shut. Mary Grace listens, not only to the story of the boys finding the body, but to all the difficulties Tyler has had over the last few years. She listens and seems to understand. She tells Tyler that as bad as Mark can be, she doesn't think he's a killer, and there must be some other explanation about what happened to Boo Boo Anderson. The next day, Mrs. Saunders and Tyler meet with Mr. Blomberg to discuss Tyler's habit of falling asleep in class. During the conference, Mr. Blomberg implies that if Tyler's mother took the job of raising her son more seriously, instead of running off to pursue her career goals, Tyler might not be having the problems he's having. Tyler loses his temper and tells Mr. Blomberg that it's his son who is responsible for the death of Boo Boo Anderson, and then realizing how ridiculous he sounds, even to Mrs. Saunders, he storms out of the school. Not knowing where to go, he wanders back to the rock quarry to think. Chucky finds Tyler and brings him home. Tyler learns that Chucky knows a lot about him from having worked with Tyler's mother fixing up the house the previous spring. He also learns that Chucky knows about the boys finding the body, and he thinks that now at least Chucky will believe him about Mark Lumber. Chucky suggests that Chucky suggests that guilt, especially on the part of Mark's friend Jack, might force him to confess, but warns Tyler to stay low for a while, just in case. <laughs>